and went six innings for the San Francisco Giants uh, is that's as far as he's gone. You get the feeling that Mike Socia the manager of the Angels in treating Apier tonight who only went two innings before as you said is going to treat him like a middle reliever in a close ball game. I don't think he at the first sign of trouble. I think social will have the pin in there and really on the other side for San Francisco if they get a lead they'll treat this like a game seven they want to avoid tomorrow night at all costs we get ready for baseball we're in Southern California again getting ready for game six Beach Boys it's all yours. These fans have had a few days to relax, rest up after game two, and they're cranked and ready for game six. Here's the lineup. For San Francisco, Kenny Lofton will lead off in center field. Rich Aurelia bats second. He's the shortstop. Jeff Kent plays second. He hits third. Barry Bonds, Benito Santiago, and JT Snow in the middle. Reggie Sanders bats seventh. And David Bell, who's been red hot for the Giants. Sean Dunstan is the DH, batting in the number nine spot. Here is Kevin Apier, and all eyes on Apier who has pitched a total of 32 innings in his last seven starts. He has never beaten the Giants in four career starts including last Sunday night like a middle reliever in a close game. That's how he how he will be treated this evening by Mike Socia. He runs a lot of deep counts. He threw more pitches to American League batters than any other pitcher in the league this year. The umpires Tim McClellan is behind home plate joined by Jerry Crawford Angel Hernandez Tim Sheeta Mike Winters and Mike Riley Tim McClellan has one of the most deliberate and delayed strike calls I'll say one of the most how about the most and it drives managers and catchers in particular crazy because he is very relaxed when he calls strikes and Mike Socia. Watching as Apier takes his warm up tosses McClellan is also a guy who doesn't historically give a lot off the corners which could really be trouble for Kevin Apier for a guy like Apier or Russ Ortiz guys who have a tough time in the strike zone anyway where Tim McClellan as you take a look at Dust Dusty Baker's son Darren where Tim McClellan could come into play tonight is on a three two or a three one count with the runner on first running when a catcher needs a quick call if he gives that delayed call it could affect the outcome of an inning. Kenny Lofton first stop with Aurelia and Kent to follow. An electric atmosphere here in Anaheim and Lofton who is six out of ten over his last two games and a big reason why the Giants have won the last two games digs his way in. We're glad you're with us on a Saturday night for game six. Let's play ball in Anaheim, California. A couple of deep breaths from Apier, and away we go. Ball one. The World Series broadcast being heard in Spanish through the length and breadth of the continents of North and South America via our colleagues at Fox Sports and Espanol here in the USA, Fox Sports Latin America. Glad they're with us tonight as well. Pop up left side and playable. Next up. So Apier takes care of the leadoff hitter and now Rich Aurelia another hitter who has really set the table for Jeff Kent and Barry Bonds the problem with Kent is up until game five he hadn't cashed in on a lot of those opportunities but Aurelia has done all he can five out of ten in his last two games and against Apier was 0 for two in game two.
Biggest start in the big league career of the 34 year old right hander Kevin Apier. And a good breaking ball in for strike one. With one out, nobody on. That missed inside, one ball, one strike. Just so you know, after Lofton made the out, the Giants have a young man in the dugout who's cueing Darren Baker when to run out and get the bat, trying to avoid what was a near disaster in game five. Aurelia pops it up. Shallow center for Erstad. Two up, two down. I guess with Anaheim being so close to Los Angeles, it's a good age to start learning about being cued. <laughs> Last Sunday, Apier retired the Giants in order in the top of the first inning. And then the Angels struck for five, and then he walked Barry Bonds to lead off the second inning, and that spelled trouble as the Giants came back with four runs. Got through the second, did not retire a man in the third inning. And combined, Apier and Ortiz went three and two thirds innings in game two. Here's Kent. Strike one. Kent did homer against Apier back in game two, but in game five came alive with a walk, a double, and a pair of two run home runs. That's inside one ball one strike. A clean shaven Jared Washburn wondering if he'll get a chance to pitch before the end of this World Series. Barry Bonds on deck. Two and one. John Lackey and Jared Washburn will be available tomorrow. Other than that everybody on the Angel staff Available this evening. And again, with a lead in the middle innings, the Giants then will turn around and play it like it's their game seven. Trying to play keep away as Kent nearly takes the hat off the head of Kevin Apier with a two out single. So Kent and the Giants hoping that he can stay hot and present Barry Bonds with RBI opportunities. Fastball away, right over the head of Kevin Apier. And now it's Bonds. And it's going to be a two out, man at first, intentional walk. The fans in San Francisco, I'm sure, are going crazy. And those that are here from San Francisco waving rubber chickens around as they did back at Pac Bell Park. This will put two on with two out for Santiago. If you're a Giants fan, you got to like what's happening. Walking Bonds here, you're walking Jeff Kent into scoring position. There's ball four to put two on with two out. I mean, to me, this is one of those careful pitch around situations as opposed to an intentional walk. Mike Sosia with runners on at first and third. In the first and third with one out. Of game four walked in intentionally. Now with two outs, walking a runner into scoring position, I don't agree with that. Well, here's Santiago who's taken advantage of opportunities like this, hitting 364 with 11 RBIs in the postseason, following a walk to Barry Bonds. And a new baseball for Kevin Apier. So this is what Jeff Kent getting hot produces for the Giants a two out hit. The Angels walk Barry Bonds and the Giants now are a well placed hit away from taking a game six first inning lead.
Two on, two out. That's too far inside, ball one. Apier wanted that slider. It's one of those sliders that are designed for the middle of the plate. You can see Molina setting up in the middle of the plate. Apier, if Apier doesn't get that pitch, he's going to be in trouble. Santiago somehow got out of the way of that pitch to make it 2 and 0. Pass ball inside, way inside, and Santiago jumping back from the Apier fastball right on the hands. So now the chance is even better for the Giants with two on, two out, a 2 0 count on Santiago. The 37 year old. NLCS most valuable player to put the Giants out in front in game six and a breaking ball on two and oh to make it two and one. This with the slider way inside with the fastball and now the slider for his first strike. Mike Sosha made the decision to put Barry Bonds on intentionally after the hit by Kent. And here's a two ball one strike pitch to Santiago. Two and two. Breaking ball and a beauty right there. That's the best slider Apier has thrown in the World Series. Spezio, eight year out of trouble. A big reason why the Giants got past the Braves and into the NLCS, Russ Ortiz did not get through two innings in game two. Here's a lineup for the Angels Eckstein, Erstad, and Salmon. In the middle, Anderson, Gloss, and Fulmer, the DH. Russ Ortiz, high school teammate. Then Spezio, Molina, and Adam Kennedy back in the number nine spot. Here is Russ Ortiz, 2 0 this postseason, but ineffective his last two starts. Winning games one and five for the Giants against the Atlanta Braves. Both games in Atlanta. Eckstein first up and a strike on the inside corner. Eckstein hitting 311 overall this postseason. Eight for 22 in the World Series. Erstan and Salmon will follow. Eckstein talked about how when this World Series is over. 27 year old Eckstein will head back to Sanford Florida back to his parents house wake up at 7 o'clock in the morning and take out the trash back to regular life after this dream postseason for a young shortstop who was put on waivers by the Red Sox two years ago the 2 1 pitch popped up shallow left and bonds plenty of room and time to get there one away. Bud Black, the pitching coach for the Angels, had this to say to Kevin Apier after the top of the first. Good tempo. Very quiet. Yes, good. Very good. Hey. The first to the first two guys, just where you want to be. All right. That's good. Tempo, rhythm, and cadence so vital to a pitcher. Walking. Barry Bonds intentionally after the Ken hit, but pitching effectively to Santiago. Here's Erstad with one out, nobody on. 
strike one over the outside corner. 93 miles per hour from Russ Ortiz, who grew up in the Valley, in Encino. A ton of family and friends on hand to watch him, hoping for better results than they witnessed in game two. Chopper to Kent has to wait for Snow to get to the bag. Two out. Our scouting report on Russ Ortiz to stay ahead. Forget about it, even though it's been strike one to both Eckstein and Erstad. A right handed pitcher with left handed stuff. That means he can't throw a ball straight. Most left handers can't either. And as he proved in game two, he dances through the raindrops. A short night, however, last Sunday. Here's Salmon with the bases empty, two out. Hit a home run against Ortiz in game two. Hit the game winner later that night, much later that night, against Felix Rodriguez. The save came from Percival, who has made only that appearance in this World Series. And the series was even at a game apiece. The Angels won game three in San Francisco. The Giants got a strong start, as it turned out, from Kirk Reeder in game four, and then pounded. Pounded on the Angels in game five, winning it 16 to 4. Two balls, no strikes on Salmon. Balls, no strikes. It's doubtful that Socio will turn Salmon loose. 3 0 against a guy who throws high fastballs. Salmon, a very good low ball hitter. A catch and release kind of thing, turning Salmon loose. <laughs> With the bases empty and Anderson on deck, a strike over the outside part of the plate. Now Salmon will take a swipe if he sees something he likes. Good fastball full count. Good fastball but not to his liking. Not bell tied lower that pitch about three inches. That's his power. Ortiz shooting for a perfect first inning. Out of play. That's up. I think that's literally into the section of Giants fans and Russ Ortiz fans that he brought to the park with him. They're easy to spot in this sea of red here in Anaheim, wearing all black. Another on three and two. David Bell. Down go the Angels. One, two, three. Second inning rolls in. Game number six. Back to the hill. Apier. Giants, Angels. No score. JT Snow first up for the Giants. No score. Second inning. And ball one. It's Snow, Sanders, and David Bell. If anybody gets on the DH, Sean Dunstan. Big numbers for JT Snow. He's had a tremendous postseason. And according to many, should have gotten a save in game number five for what he did on that play at the plate with Darren Baker. The world is aware of JT Snow, if for no other reason than what he did for Darren Baker. One ball, one strike. The six time Gold Glove Award winner had never shown better hands than grabbing Darren on his way past the plate. Close to 370 and a save. Not a bad World Series thus far. The 1 1 pitch from Apier. 
into center field not well hit Erstad is there one out Reggie Sanders coming up here are his thoughts on playing for Dusty Baker. He was like a father figure. You know, Dusty is definitely a guy that um, I've always wanted to play for. Finally got the opportunity to do that. Uh, for me, um, I think what sticks out in my mind the most is his honesty. Um, it's very tough to be a manager and, uh, and being as, uh, as honest as you can because things change, and, and we understand that. But if things do change, he'll call you in your office, look you in your eye, and tell you this is what's going on. Will he be doing that for the Giants next year? Some other team or taking a year off? The future is uncertain for Dusty Baker, unsigned past this season as a breaking ball missed inside ball one. One thing that isn't unclear is the immediate future for Dusty Baker, who next weekend will take his father on a trip to South Bend, Indiana to watch Notre Dame. By the way, took care of Florida State today. Notre Dame will be playing Boston College, something he has always wanted to do. A 1 0. There's a strike from Apier. Neither Dusty nor his dad have ever been to South Bend. One out, the base is empty. Apier watches Sanders get out of there. Dusty's dad called him and said, Remember that coat you got me a few years ago, that heavy overcoat? Well, the moths got it. We may need to get a new one before we take that trip. In for strike two. It was just such a count that Reggie Sanders homered against Kevin Apier to put the Giants on the board last Sunday. An 0-2 fastball inside, a three-run home run, and at the time that made it 5-3 Angels. With one out. Now two out. First strike out of the night for Apier. And the early returns on the breaking ball for Apier. Tight with a lot of bite. When Apier gets on top of the breaking ball, it goes down. It's actually the same grip. If he drops the arm level, it's parallel to the ground. If he gets on top of it, it goes down like a curveball. So on top of the ball. Good curveball slider slash slider to Sanders. Here's David Bell. Two out bases empty in the second. Ball one. Bell four for seven his last two games. Look at his overall numbers in the World Series. 375. Out of the number eight spot. Oh, that caught the outside corner. And a 1 1 count as Tim McClellan, the home plate umpire, gave that pitch to Apier. With two out, the base is clear. Bell, strike two. If you go on recent history, the odds are not with Kevin Apier, but if you look at what he did during the regular season, he won 14 games and had an ERA at 3.92. And if you look at what he's doing right now, he is pitching with the confidence that he didn't have last Sunday. Two and two. Sosha gives a look after the Angels don't get this pitch. Uh, from the side, it's difficult for a manager to see whether a pitch is outside or inside. They could tell the height. Garrett Anderson, the number four hitter for the Angels, first up. Gloss and Fulmer will follow. Ortiz took something off that pitch. Strike one. Anderson, seven hits in this World Series. Over 300 for the postseason.
Anderson one for two against Ortiz. Back in game two, the count evens a ball and a strike. Two and one. Good breaking ball from Ortiz. Kevin Apier didn't get some close pitches in the top of the second. Ortiz wanted that breaking ball. Anderson into deep center field. At the wall, it's Lofton for the out. About 400 feet away, and Anderson makes a loud first out here in the second. Garrett Anderson still looking for his first extra base hit of the World Series. Fastball low and away, a two seamer. Lofton with room. Here's Gloss. One out, base is empty. Ortiz has set down the first four. Good pitch for strike one. Usually when a hitter comes back and checks his bat like that, he doesn't think he hit it on the sweet part of the bat. Maybe a little down on the end. He had a long way to hit it down on the end. Gloss spun out of there by Ortiz. One ball, one strike. Second time in as many games as Gloss has received the high hard one. What a force he has been for the Angels throughout the playoffs and the World Series. Batting out of the number five spot, seven home runs. Gloss was trying to launch after getting flipped by Ortiz, and it's one and two. That's when a hitter is the happiest, when he smokes one after being knocked down. Gloss set up at a ball and two strikes, Ortiz, in search of his first strikeout. Two and two. The 28 year old Russ Ortiz on two and two to Gloss. Full count. Family and friends that were handed tickets by Russ Ortiz prior to this game six start. The California native ready on three and two to gloss. Foul tip still full. Troy Gloss not only the classic power hitter. 118 home runs over the last three years. But he has shown during the postseason what a good hitter he is. Adjusting after two strikes. The Giants, when they've had success, have gone up the ladder to get him. That missed up the ladder in a one-out walk. Dusty Baker, the Giants manager, talks about Russ Ortiz, what he hopes for tonight, and what he did in game two. tonight. I don't care what your name is, that you can have a bad night. And, uh, uh, you know, when you see greats having bad nights, especially in the playoffs and, uh, and under pressure where they never have bad nights before, hey, man, I'll let you know that you're capable too. And, uh, you know, we don't anticipate he'll have two. We don't anticipate he'll have a very, very you know, good night. Not too much more time for bad nights. First base runner of the night. For Anaheim, and that brings in Brad Fulmer, who played high school baseball with a man on the mound. Van Eyes Montclair Pratt. And that's
that's a strike. Montclair prep. These two teammates, Russ Ortiz was a senior in the pitching staff on his way off to Oklahoma. And Brad Fulmer was putting together a record setting hitting career in high school. He had 508 with 30 home runs and 130 RBIs. One on, one out. One ball, one strike. Hitting spot for Brad Fulmer. American League pitchers try to pitch him inside. The reason for that, he's got that curl where the bat is curled almost facing the pitcher. He's got a long way to come to hit the ball out in front. Two and two. That pitch right there, he has a very difficult time catching up to. You can see he's got to come all the way out here. That's a long way to go. Little time to do it. And he fouls this one off. Score second inning, game six. Broken bat pop up for Aurelia. Two up. That's the best fastball Ortiz could throw to Brad Fulmer. He crowds him, as you see right there, breaks his bat, and a harmless fly to short. Now Dusty Baker is going to come out and talk to the home plate umpire Tim McClellan and look at Benito Santiago who maybe took a foul tip or took the follow through swing from Fulmer. A lot of times hitters will tell a catcher when he has a back swing. It looked like he hit him on the top of the left thumb. But that back swing by Fulmer clipping Santiago watch how the top hand comes off the bat Benito appears to be all right fortunately that was his glove hand right on the top of the left thumb the hitter is Spezio. And that's a strike on the outside corner. Scott, five out of 17 in the World Series, five RBIs. 347 overall after lighting up in the first two rounds. The loss with a short lead. The differences between these two ball clubs are about three feet away from one another. Spezio has made the Angels like Santiago has made the Giants. Back tonight, starter Kevin Apier was traded to Anaheim for Mo Vaughn, the former first baseman for the Angels, as Spezio flies into center for Lofton. The second inning is over. A one-out walk to Gloss. The Angels strand there first. 
third inning now. Dunstan, Lofton, Aurelia coming up for the Giants. A win tonight. They're world champions. Sean Dunstan first up. He's the DH tonight for Dusty Baker, as he was in game two. Did not get a hit against Kevin Apier. The World Series one for six. Big hit in the NLCS game five, the clincher against the Cardinals. And here's Dunstan starting the third inning with no score. Dunstan first came up back in 1985. Played with the Cubs until 1995. And he goes after the first pitch and flies it into right. One pitch, one out in the third inning. Before the game, Sean Dunstan Jr., who runs out to get Dad's bat, was being stretched by Sean Dunstan Sr. What's going on with these Giants? And then, like any good father son combination, Junior will stretch Sr. What a great shot. <laughs> That's really something that's important to Dusty Baker and it's something that's kind of taken on a life of its own with these Giants. Some have called it a daycare center down there in the dugout for San Francisco. But everybody is welcome to bring their kids. A bunt attempt. Gloss was waiting for it. Two out. Lofton did not catch Gloss sleeping at third what a play by gloss look how far he comes for this bunt when he feels the ball and throws it he's in foul territory look how far he comes for that bunt fine play by Troy gloss when you pick a ball up like that you have to be ready to throw it so it's not a bare hand pickup it's almost a bare fingered pickup because there's no way to adjust the ball into the throwing position. Good play by Gloss. And now with two out, here's Aurelia. Dusty Baker telling us that Sean, or rather Kenny Lofton, is the best bunter he's ever had. You could tell him that it's coming. They could play 50 feet away, and he could still get on base. But Gloss was ready. And with two out, nobody on, Aurelia takes ball one outside. Well, if you're a left-handed bunter, and you can make a third baseman barehand the ball to get you out. You'll take those chances every time. With two out, a 1 0 pitch. Breaking balls low with suddenly red hot Jeff Kent on deck. And then bombs. Aurelia fly to center his first time up. Looking for a pitch to hammer on 2 and 0. Oh. And that's ball three. With two out and nobody on a 3 0 -oh pitch. Taken for strike one. 90 miles per hour from Kevin Apier. That's about where he will top out. Apier had a torn labrum years ago with Kansas City. Yeah, it's not the velocity that makes Kevin effective, it's the movement. Two out, Aurelia. Checked his swing on ball four up and in. Second walk, first unintentional walk, and that'll bring Jeff Kent to the plate. Kent has a hit tonight. Three hits in game five. Remember that sound bite by Bud Black, the pitching coach of the Angels, about the rhythm and cadence of Kevin Apier. That's what a walk does. It throws off your rhythm. Five balls, four out of the strike zone to Aurelia. Never has defeated the Giants, including the postseason. And four career starts. Kevin Apier trying to break that string, or at least give his team a chance to win here in game six. They're only looking and hoping 
for five or so innings out of Kevin Apier and then it's going to be a long night for the bullpen for Mike Sosha. Sosha telling us before the game that even in the fifth inning there's a possibility Francisco Rodriguez would be used. And no one to Kent. Blocked by Molina. Go ahead, run it first, two out in the third inning. That missed the inside corner, two and one. And Sosha says, Come on, Tim, after the Angels don't get this pitch. That tailing fastball inside, from that shot, it looks inside a lot of times pitchers can catch front corners with pitches and a catcher can catch it out of the strike zone a 2 1 delivery popped up playable X dine out Anderson letting him go a long way to catch that ball to end the inning a two out walk to Kent Darren Baker hard at work in game six no score into the bottom of inning number three. Bottom of the third inning, no score in game six, and Russ Ortiz heads back to work. Benji Molina slices one down the right side for Sanders. One pitch, one out. We talked about Dusty Baker and his choice, John Lee Hooker in game five. Mike Sosha, no surprise for a kid who grew up back east, selected Bruce Springsteen for our Pepsi fan camp tonight. Adam Kennedy stands in with one out nobody on here in the third inning and takes a strike three hold New Jersey near Asbury Park where Bruce grew up and so no surprise that Sosha would pick him as Kennedy takes ball one one ball one strike. No later than Monday one of these two teams will be celebrating glory days. One out, nobody on. The number nine hitter Kennedy comes up empty. Our sprint virtual manager question with Bonds leading off. Next inning, do you pitch to Barry Bonds? Vote now using PCS Vision from Sprint or log on to FoxSports.com. You, Tim, don't have to log on or get out your phone. No. Just tell me. Yes, I would. A one-two pitch to Kennedy. Two balls, two strikes. I was wrong the last time. I thought Mike Sosha would not walk Barry with two outs and Jeff Kent on at first base. But he put him on intentionally. Base is empty in front of Adam Kennedy here in the third inning. Kennedy fouls it back. And as always, we remind you that this is merely an exhibition, not a competition. Please, no wagering on those questions. So Tim it's all in good fun. Kennedy five hits and 18 trips to the plate in this World Series. Trying to get something started with one out in the third. Stays up there. I'll say this about Kevin Apier. As well not only. Or his pitch is moving well. Not only is his tempo good while in his delivery, but his tempo between pitches has been a little quicker and a little more crisp he than has we're used to. He has picked it up. Ortiz on two and two deals, and Kennedy fights it off. The 
only blemish on the record of Russell Ortiz the one out walk to gloss last inning got around it. Kennedy strikes out. Two outs in the inning with Eckstein coming up listed at 5'8". We asked him come on David 5'7". How tall are you? That's a stretch. I if I have if I have shoes on I, I I'll probably hit the 5'7 mark. But I think um, more in the five six and a half range. <laughs> five six and a half digs in with two out nobody on in the bottom of the third inning. We didn't even ask him about the one seventy. No. David has 19 hits in the postseason, and he doesn't have an extra base hit, but he seems like he has. One ball, no strikes. Sprint virtual manager question: 84 percent, I would imagine most aren't thinking strategy; they just want to see Bond swing the bat. Sure. One ball, one strike. Ortiz pitching very well. One and two. Concerning Barry Bonds, I think what the Giants have seen this year, they've seen their opponents try to get ahead of the San Francisco Giants more than any other team to make the at bats by Bonds become more inconsequential. Here's a one two pitch. Eckstein rounds to short. Aurelia had to come a long way. Good play, and the inning is over. The Angels go in order. We go to the fourth. It'll be Bond, Santiago, and Snow. Giants trying to get a lead. Middle innings, game six. The World Series on Fox is brought to you by MasterCard. There are some things money can't buy for everything else. There's MasterCard. Barry Bonds will lead it off as we go to the fourth inning. Joe Buck and Tim McCarver with you here in the booth, and uh, I am with you on this one. I think we are going to see pitches for Barry Bonds to try and hit out of this ballpark. I think uh, we're going to see pitches on one side of the plate or the other. I'd be very surprised if Apier throws anything down the middle of the plate to Bonds. Bonds leading it off. Santiago and Snow will follow. Away we go. Ball one low. Again, an intentional pass to Bonds with a runner at first, two out in the first, and Apier then ran the count to 2 0 on Santiago, who's next here. Came back and got him on a foul out to the first baseman. Bonds ready for a 1 0 pitch. That's on the inside corner, a ball and a strike. Threading the needle, and he gets the strike. The slider just hitting. Hitting 500 in this World Series. He's been walked 25 times in the postseason. 13 intentional walks. That's over, but low, two balls and a strike. Bonds takes ball three, three and one. So you look at the other side, a leadoff walk could start trouble for the San Francisco Giants. Sure. It did back in game two when Apier had a five to nothing lead and walked Bonds leading off the second. Bonds was moving around ready to take the pitch, and the ball came in at his shoe tops and almost clipped him. A leadoff walk. Here's Kevin Apier talking about pitching to Bonds in this World Series. He deserves that much respect, and and uh, he's you know the talk about him is not uh, how would you say out of place by overestimating him at all. He's he's that dangerous, that potent. Uh, you know he struck out only 40 something times this year, and when he does make contact with the ball, it's usually hard. So. Um, you know that's a big part of their game and and uh, how we approach that is quite significant. 
forty seven strikeouts forty six home runs lead off man is on first time that's happened tonight for the Giants and here's Santiago and there's Paul one let's take a look at that three one pitch that came in around the ankles whoa says Barry he was hit nine times this year well you didn't think they'd walk him in the first they did I didn't think they'd pitch around him and it looked like Apier especially when he fell behind pitched around Bonds to lead off here in the fourth they did and now the Giants trying to take advantage of a man at first and nobody out Santiago drops one down all that spin on it it hops foul not a bad idea Gloss was very deep and it's one and one this was a bunt for a base hit if Gloss fielded it properly then it's a sacrifice but certainly a bunt for a base hit and the English takes it foul reminiscent of the Lofton bunt the other night that was so important in game four game won by the Giants on the David Bell hit in the eighth four to three not only the David Bell hit but the leadoff base hit by J.T. Snow which allowed Bell the opportunity for the RBI hits against Francisco Rodriguez who was pitching that inning hits coming against him from the windup have been scarce A 1 1 pitch. Santiago took ball two. Two and one. Mike Socio, that's the third question for Tim McClellan. That pitch was a little low, I thought. Socio realizing that Apier has to have those borderline calls to be effective. So the count in Santiago's favor. Runner at first, nobody out. A low throw over, scooped up by Spezia. Again, Santiago came into this game eight out of 22, following a Bonds walk. First inning, he fouled out. Another walk to Bonds, and a 2-1 pitch to Santiago. On the inside corner, two and two. Again on the corner with the fastball. Game six, no score, fourth inning, Giants up. Three games to two. To third. Nice pick by Gloss. Kennedy double play. Five, four, three to clear the bases. The good infielders will keep their glove below the hops. And that way, when that tricky hop occurs, they absorb it. Nicely done by Gloss. Realizing who is running. And Kennedy turns it. So the Angels got away with a walk to Bonds in the first and again here in the fourth with the double play ball following. And JT Snow bats with the bases empty, two down. A bender missed for ball one. Snow with two home runs in this postseason. One in the World Series, and that came in game one against Washburn. Two and oh. That ball that Santiago hit was hit very hard. When it's hit that hard, often runners will not have a chance to get down on top of the second baseman. Kennedy releasing that ball before Bonds could get to him. And Kennedy had a leg up on a Hall of Famer. <laughs> a 2 0 pitch. 2 and 1.
On two and one with two outs. Snow hits it to second. Kennedy. Inning over. Kevin Apier pitching like the top big game pitcher they thought they acquired from the Mets, turning in a good one through four. Bottom of the fourth, no score in game six. Russ Ortiz back to the hill. Erstad, Salmon, and Anderson coming up for the Angels, no score. To the second baseman, Kent. One out, Bud Black wearing a microphone, the pitching coach for the Angels. Had this discussion with Kevin Apier after the top of this fourth. Those last, those first two to snow, a little quick again. And you got a little excited about the double play ball. I slide that carried over. Yeah. <laughs> then that last pitch, the la that last pitch was great. As far as, you know, you're quiet, you got over the rubber, had a nice turn. Remember that reaction after the double play ball turned nicely by Gloss and then two straight balls to Snow. Salmon takes ball one. Here's the double play hit into by Santiago 5 4 3 after the walk to Bonds and that little reaction a few extra jolts of energy and the first two missed to JT Snow. 2-0 now on Salmon. Russ Ortiz has not allowed a hit. The Giants have won. Good play by Aurelia in the hole. Can he finish? Salmon on with a one out hit. Tim Salmon getting out of the box very well. A nice play by Aurelia to his right knee. He looked like he had a tough time with the transfer and clearly a hit for Tim Salmon. Salmon getting down the line very well. A snow can't come up, come up with the short hop. Right? There, when he brought the glove down, it looked like he had a tough time with the transfer. The throw is low. Snow can't come up with it, and the Angels have their first hit. Now Garrett Anderson. Timeout. Timeout by Santiago, the catcher. Prior to the throw over by Ortiz. Anderson flied to the wall and center his first time up. turn four six three to end the inning and a race to hit by salmon both pitchers turning in four shut out innings here in game six now the fifth no score back after this from your local Fox station. The old water feature out in center field and the rocks that they put in when they renovated this Anaheim Stadium. The 1998 season. And this game six moves into the fifth inning. And Reggie Sanders first up. Bell and Dunstan will follow against Apier. The fastball gets past the bat of Sanders upstairs, strike one. We've said it many times that's where teams try to pitch Sanders above the belt. 
Home plate umpire Tim McClellan just asked for the baseball, inspected it, and put it back in play. Too far inside, a ball and a strike. Xander struck out his first time. Apier struck out two. Ortiz, one walk, one strikeout, one hit. But a double play hit into by Anderson, and Russ Ortiz has faced only one over the minimum. Popped up. X time. One out. October's magical matchups continue tomorrow with Fox NFL Sunday beginning with America's number one pregame show. Then it's history in the making as Emmett Smith needs just 93 yards against Seattle to break Walter Payton's all time rushing record. Or the Cardinals take on Terrell Owens and the 49ers in an NFC West showdown with first place at stake or other regional action. All part of a full weekend of magical matchups. There you go. That all takes place on Fox and then if necessary meaning if the Angels win tonight game seven tomorrow night San Francisco and Anaheim right here one out in the fifth strike one to David Bell two home runs this postseason one ball one strike. Joe, this by far the best start of two pitchers in any World Series game. The starters have been poor, the bullpens have been strong, but tonight it's the starters. Strike two on Bell. You think of what these two did in game two, they combined for three and two thirds innings, 12 runs on 14 hits. Apier's gone four and a third, Ortiz four. No runs on a total of two hits here in game six. Here's a one two to David Bell with one out. That caught dirt and then caught Molina. Two and two. Even in a shutout both catchers having problems Santiago hit on the back of the left thumb. And this ball bouncing up and naturally hitting Molina. I say naturally because that baseball seems to find you occasionally, even, even though you have the chest protector on. Came up and pinched that left shoulder. It's not sweat, those are tears rolling down his cheeks. Tim McClellan, the home plate umpire, gave Molina a chance to let some of that pain subside. Now Bell gets out as we await the 2 2 pitch. Squirter to the shortstop. Eckstein can't make the play. Off the end of the bat, and David Bell is on with one out here in the fifth. Base hit. Seventh of this World Series for Bell. That's an unreadable grounder. The ball, as you properly call it, squirting toward Eckstein, and he dives over the ball. It hits the heel of the glove. And even if David had come up with that ball, he doesn't get Bell too much to do. That was one of the vintage apier pitches. The slider on the outside hit off the end of the bat. And Bell with an infield hit. Now it's Dunstan with Lofton on deck. Go ahead, run it first, one out in the fifth. And a good guy with whom to hit and run in Sean Dunstan, a low ball hitter. Dunstan fly to right the first pitch back in the third inning one out of seven in the World Series for 
Breaking ball missed for ball one. Francisco Rodriguez getting ready. For Anaheim in their bullpen. Talked about it earlier, Mike Sosia saying that it was not too early to bring Rodriguez into the game in the fifth inning. We're in the fifth, one on, one out. If those are called from the bench. Those throws over could be trying to buy time for Rodriguez to get ready in the bullpen. Dunstan in a key spot for the Giants here in the fifth inning. It's a very good point, Joe. Normally, even though Apier has pitched very well. A manager would call a pitcher to throw over to first base to thwart a steal or a hit and run. But here, with Rodriguez up and throwing, good time to send Bell right here. That's foul down the left field side. Off the bat of Dunstan, one ball, one strike. Dusty Baker saying that Sean Dunstan. Got his start last Sunday against Apier because, in order to be effective, Apier has to keep the ball down. Dunstan, a low ball hitter, he did get one hit in that game on Sunday night. A game lost by the Giants, 11 to 10. The hit came against Lackey. Who is the probable Game Seven starter for the Angels if there is a Game Seven? A 1-1. Francisco Rodriguez did not pitch in game five. The travel day yesterday, so he's had two days off and should be raring to go. But before Rodriguez, it's a matchup of Dunstan and Apier, and Dunstan could put the Giants in a good spot. Driven deep into left field. Back is Anderson at the wall. 2 nothing Giants. Home run Sean Dunstan. And in game six, a fifth inning lead. We said Dunstan was a low ball hitter and he chooses a down and in fastball off Apier to put the Giants on top. Now it's Lofton. And it's a strike over the inside corner. Nothing San Francisco in the fifth inning of game six. A win away from a world championship. One ball, one strike on Lofton. Up with the Cubs in 1985. And here with the Giants in 2002. The biggest swing of the bat in his long big league career. John Jr. was right there watching. A 1 1 Lofton takes ball two. It was Sean Jr. stretching that was responsible for that home run. <laughs> we saw it earlier. <laughs> Those two playing around before this game six. With one out. Nobody on. Two balls and a strike on Lofton. 
now three and one and Apier may be facing his last hitter of the night with the really intent to follow and Rodriguez ready in the bullpen. Driven into right center field well hit this ball is down and cut off a double by Lofton he's at second with one out and that's it for Kevin Apier shut out baseball through four and a third but a base hit by David Bell followed by a two run home run by the D.H. and number nine hitter Sean Dunstan the double by Lofton. And Apier's night here in game six. And Apier not at all happy with Sosia. The night is finished. This a big reason why. Dunstan with a one out, two run home run. The double followed, a runner at second. Still only one out. And Sean Dunstan right now, a game six hero for San Francisco. Pitching change, Angels. First pitch from Rodriguez to Aurelia runner at second with one out here in the fifth inning and that misses ball one Francisco Rodriguez a five and one record with a one point two oh ERA the one loss came in game four. Trying to time Rodriguez, he gave him an extra look. Could certainly understand the competitive fire of Apier in being taken out of this game. If it's regular season, no way. But you can understand Mike Sosia having to make that move with the Angels facing elimination. Here comes a 1-1 pitch. Aurelia, strike two. When Apier relieved Kevin Apier that reaction on the mound and then in the dugout this all he can do now is sit and watch watch the 20 year old Francisco Rodriguez try to end this top of the fifth and keep it a two run game Francisco Rodriguez became the youngest pitcher to win a World Series game and then in game four the second youngest to lose one. Lofton at second after the double one out and Aurelia gets a piece. Kent next. And then Bonds. The Angels in the bottom of this inning will have Gloss, Fulmer, and Spezio. The focus back in the other dugout and Russ Ortiz, who has allowed only one hit, one walk, one strikeout. Lofton stealing third. Picked a good pitch, and he's at third with only one out. Just a matter of time. The slider away, short hop. Molina can't handle it. The throw to third, too late. Timing from Lofton. Keep in mind that no manager will ever give a runner at second base the steal sign unless it's part of a hit and run. Ever. They're on their own always. Good jump, good time to do it. That will bring the infield in for Anaheim. As the count's gone to two and two with one out on Aurelia and Francisco Rodriguez needs one of his strikeouts. To the shortstop, Eckstein looks at Lofton, gets the out, two out.
Infield in, you have to make the ball go through. Another tough slider. Often in their haste, infielders will look at the runner and not center the ball. That ball hitting in the heel of the glove because Eckstein was checking Lofton at third base. Now Lofton to third with two out for Jeff Kent, who has a hit tonight. It also popped up. Looking for a big two out RBI hit for the Giants, who lead 2 0. That nasty slider for strike one. Right side, foul ball, out of play. Strike two. Pitchers have to have a lot of confidence in their catchers to throw the types of sliders that they're capable of throwing in situations like this. If they throw it in the dirt, your catcher can't come up with it. You have a tendency to back off of it. That's why a guy like Benji Molina is so valuable to these Angels pitchers. In the dirt, here comes Lofton, three to nothing, San Francisco. A double, a stolen base, and an 0-2 slider in the dirt that Molina tried to backhand and couldn't keep it at the plate. I was thinking the same thing, Joe. Uncharacteristic for Benji Molina trying to backhand the ball like an in infielder would. And a wild pitch. Lofton on the stolen base, and now the wild pitch gives the Giants a valuable third run. The one-two pitch, Kent. Loss. Inning over. Before the game, Sean Junston Jr. Stretching dad. Dad shoots one over the wall in the fifth inning. Sean Dunstan to make it 2 nothing. A double by Lofton, a stolen base. San Francisco carries a 3 to nothing lead into the bottom of the fifth of game six. Bottom of the fifth inning, and the Angels down three games to two. Trail in game six, 3 to nothing. Gloss, Fulmer, and Spezio for Russ Ortiz, who has been terrific. On the outside corner strike one. That is about as animated as Mike Socia will be with any umpire. Talking to home plate umpire Tim McClellan perhaps about some of the pitches that Apier made. Oh and two on gloss. Gloss walked his first time. Ortiz just missed the inside corner. Good 0-2 pitch right there. Now it's one and two. And Gloss hits one to deep center field. Back at the wall. Santiago wanted that fastball up. He was emphasizing get it up with his target. Ortiz got it up. And Gloss almost got it up. But Lofton calls it in. 
So the leadoff man is gone. And as you look at Lofton, you think back to July 28th when San Francisco made the trade with the White Sox. And now here in game six of the World Series, how important has Lofton been oh, man. in this postseason for San Francisco? With what he did in game one of the NLCS in St. Louis. Everybody has seen highlights then of Matt Morris after a home run, running one up and in, or Mike Crudale, rather, after Morris gave up the home run. Lofton ends up getting the game winning hit with two out in the ninth inning of game five. And the last three games has been in the middle of everything for San Francisco. Fulmer, one ball, one strike. Lofton came into this game. Six out of his last ten over the last couple of World Series games. And after the home run by Dunstan, doubled into right center, stole third, and that proved very large as he scored in the wild pitch by Francisco Rodriguez to make it 3 0. The 1 1, Fulmer, strike two. After Dunstan's home run, Lofton ran home. That steal of third base. Good change up to Brad Fulmer. When Rodriguez was warming up, Sonny Jackson, the third base coach of the Giants, went out to talk to Lofton. And I would imagine the fact that Rodriguez's breaking ball and fastball has so much action. Easier to run on guys like that because it's tougher from a catcher's position to throw. And as you mentioned, Joe. The right pitch on which to run, the ball in the dirt. And then he came home on the wild pitch. It's two and two on Fulmer with one out in the bottom of the fifth. The Anaheim starter, Apier, lasted four and a third. Fulmer jammed a bit and into right field for Reggie Sanders two up. Our Chevy trucks in game box score. The Angels. The only single belongs to Salmon. And it was an infield single. And a walk to Gloss with one out in the second. Otherwise absolutely nothing. Against Russ Ortiz as he turns in. Four and two thirds innings of shutout ball on one hit. Now it's Spezio. Ball one. Both teams feature a good bullpen. The middle relief has faltered the last two games for Anaheim. All over the last two games, the Giants and their bullpen. Posted a 1.23 ERA. And Ortiz is trying to get it to that bullpen in the late inning relievers with a game six lead. Two and zero on Spezio. Three and zero. And one. Three and two as Ortiz tries to come back from a three oh count. Three two pitch to Spezio. Do it again. <laughs> I 
cast of that 70s show here in attendance in Anaheim. Wilma Calderama, Topher Grace. As Russ Ortiz excites the fans that he brought with him to game six. The Encino native brings it home on another 3 2 pitch to Spezio. Slice down the left field line and out of play. It's better than the radar gun when in the fifth inning a pitching coach since can see a guy like Spezio fouling balls off the other way. That's the best gauge of how a pitcher is throwing particularly a power pitcher like Ortiz. Dave Rigetti the Giants pitching coach to be thrilled with what he's getting out of the 28 year old. What a turnaround from game two 15 batters faced, 14 outs. Then a double play turned behind him as Spezio grounds to snow. The sure handed first baseman flips, and that'll do it for the Angels in the fifth. We go to the sixth. Bond, Santiago, Snow coming up for the Giants who lead the series and this game 3 0. We move to the sixth inning here in game six, and Francisco Rodriguez back to the hill. He hits the outside corner, strike one to Bond. Bonds has walked twice tonight, 26 times in the postseason. Six for 12, and he's been able to swing the bat. That is crushed oh. deep into the night, and it's four to nothing, San Francisco. Eighth home run of this postseason. For the man who's number four on the all time list with 613 career home runs. Four nothing Giants. My God. That's one of the toughest sliders to hit. Ball about neck high, middle of the plate. And just absolutely crushed. That thing will take your breath away. Oh. It's taken the air out of this stadium. Eight home runs this postseason. Another exit. Liz Bonds. That's 14 home runs now in this World Series for the Giants. And that's a World Series record. As Santiago waits for an 0-2 pitch. Takes strike three right down the middle, one out. Gene Klein's the hitting coach for the Giants as he watches this ball sail out. Oh! Dunstan has gone deep. Bonds has gone deep. And now JT Snow takes a strike from Francisco Rodriguez. Snow is lined to center and grounded out. A four to nothing Giants lead in the sixth. And a base hit to left field by Snow. Nice easy swing by JT Snow, who scored the game four winning run with Francisco Rodriguez on the mound after a leadoff hit. And that is when Snow is hitting well. We've talked about it during the postseason when that front shoulder goes right back to the pitcher. Line drive to left field. While they meet on the mound, 
an interesting note a lot has been made about the kids in the Giants dugout it's important to Dusty Baker to have a relaxed atmosphere and people have their opinions should it happen shouldn't it happen do they belong down there should they be on the field as bat boys go back to 1954 and that's Chris DeRocher at the age of nine Leo DeRocher's son the year the Giants last won a world championship and Chris DeRocher was in the dugout as a good luck charm. He was also there three years earlier in 1951 at the age of six as a good luck charm. And Darren Baker is undefeated in his time in the dugout being the Giants bat boy. That footage of the 1954 Giants I have never seen. The one on one out. One ball one strike on Reggie Sanders. Dennis D'Agostino. The one who thought of that. One of the many who helped us put on these broadcasts helping us with our statistical information. That was Chris DeRocher there for that specific reason back in 1954. Strike two on Sanders one and two. Now the Giants have taken it to the extreme as they've got eight or nine kids running around in that dugout. They have a whole team of children down there. One on one out one ball two strikes and Sanders steps out. A slider for strike three. Two out in the inning. Let's go back to 1954. Dusty Rhodes. Game one. Tenth inning. Pinch hit game winning home run. You can see that short porch in right. 257 feet. Willie Mays jumping around the bases. As the Giants won game one. And there's number two, Chris DeRocher, the little guy, right in the middle of that celebration. The Giants went on to sweep the Indians four games to none. Parade in the streets of Manhattan as David Bell stands in. Strike one. Dusty Rhodes, four for six with seven RBIs in that World Series. The Indians, who had won 111 games that year, were swept. Last time the Giants won the World Series. One on, two out, no balls, one strike. Bell off the end of the bat, a pop up. Spezio and Kennedy at Spezio in foul territory, and the inning is over. This inning started with a bang, a blast by Barry Bonds. It's a four to nothing San Francisco lead. Bottom of the sixth, game six. The Giants up three games to two. First pitch, bottom of the sixth inning is in for strike one from Russ Ortiz. Molina, Kennedy, Eckstein. Four to nothing Giants. Trying to wrap up the World Series tonight. One ball, one strike. Molina lined out to right his first time up. Up and after a pitch, one ball, two strikes. The Giants organization has won the World Series five times. Coming off their 17th National League pennant. Molina lines one to right for Reggie Sanders. And the leadoff man is gone. One away and Adam Kennedy will step in. Support your favorite team with a Major League Baseball authentic collection premier jacket. 
featuring ripstop nylon and micro fleece lining. Call 1 866 MLB Game or visit MLB.com to order now. This crowd hasn't quit. One out, bottom of the sixth. Kennedy takes ball one. Shattered bat, base hit. A one out single by Kennedy. The Angels are hopeful that it all started so innocently. Kennedy almost falls down on the swing. That's the power of the Ortiz fastball. And Jeff Kent misses it by about six inches. Time. Strike one for Ortiz. David is fly to left and grounded out. Only two hits tonight for Anaheim. A lot has changed since the third inning of game four in San Francisco. Anaheim had just received a two run home run from Gloss. The Angels were hitting 364 in the World Series. But then Reeder got it together on the mound. Since then, the Anaheim Angels offense has been shut down. One on, one out. Eckstein drives it foul down the left field line. Reader ended up turning in six innings. The bullpen faced the minimum the rest of the way. Then game five two nights ago, a 16 to four win for the Giants, and tonight a four to nothing sixth inning lead. The Angels with only two hits. That's in game four came from Kirk Reeder and Kenny Lofton. They had first and second and nobody out on them. two balls hit about 90 feet. And 0 2 to Eckstein. Ball one. The reason I said that is that the guy at the plate right now is the guy who could get that type of hit right now. Certainly not a bunt. But a little flare the other way, like Kennedy had. Or a walk. Eckstein battling with two strikes. It's still one and two. Another foul.
slow roller to Aurelia. Two out. That ball had so much spin on it. Looked like it rolled around in the glove of Aurelia. And he grabbed it. Got it to first for the second out of the inning. We have seen several types of ground balls against Ortiz hit like that. That ball was in the pocket, drifted toward the web, and Aurelia throws him out. Hit so slowly that Kennedy is able to get the second. Two out in the inning, and Darren Erstad will be the hitter. Even the infield gloves that major leaguers use now are so big that often when you reach in there, the ball's not where you think it's going to be. Erstad won for his last 12. Ball one. Russ Ortiz one out away from turning in six. Huge innings for the Giants. Two and oh. Russ Ortiz has never pitched a complete game shutout in his career. Further, there hasn't been a shutout pitched by anybody in this postseason. Total of seven last year, none this year. A 2 0 pitch to Erstad. 3 0 with Salmon on deck. Down by four, you expect Erstad to take. And he does strike one. Last 31 at bats for the Angels, who were red hot. To the early stages of game four, only three hits. Normally, you'd think it's good policy to take here, but the Angels need a shocker of their own. A two run home run would do it. Two on, two out. Second walk of the night from Russ Ortiz, who gave up a home run to Salmon in game two. It was Ortiz's last pitch of the night. Made it 7 to 4 at the time. A game that was won 11 10 by the Angels. Dave Rigetti out there to obviously no reminders necessary, but he's out there to give his bullpen a chance to warm up. Felix Rodriguez and Scott Ayer. But also to remind Ortiz that Salmon loves the ball down. That home run in the third inning of last Sunday's game came on a low fastball. That was the one you just saw. Strike one on the foul ball, 93 miles per hour for Ortiz.
One ball, one strike. Salmon went strike two. A high fastball and Salmon in the hole. Didn't want to, but he did. Two balls, two strikes. Mr. Calm, Garrett Anderson waits on deck. You would think the Giants just showing Salmon the fast, the breaking ball to go back to the high fastball right now. walk a strikeout and we go to the seventh inning of game six belt high fastball to end it and Ortiz through six four nothing Giants back after this from your local Fox station strike one from Rodriguez as we begin the seventh inning four to nothing San Francisco and the biggest swing of the night for the Giants to this point came from Sean Dunstan. A two run home run back in the fifth. Against Kevin Apier, the Angel starter. Made it 2 0. It's now 4 0. Sean Dunstan's first home run since April 15th. Get him! Get up! Get up! That home run was the Giants' only pinch hit home run of the season on the 15th of April. And no more from Dunstan until right now. His account goes to one and two. He waited 39 years to get the biggest hit of his life. Thirty nine years of his life and 18 years of his big league life. A one two pitch Dunstan. One hundred forty seven at bats between home runs. Then Apier stayed in face Lofton who doubled into right center. Stole third and scored on a wild pitch. That made it three nothing and Bonds. Club to gargantuan home run leading off last inning to make it four nothing and Ortiz. Russ Ortiz is taking care of the rest. The one two pitch Dunstan pops it up. X dime staggers but makes the play. One out up in 1985 for the Chicago Cubs. That's Maddox by the way on the mound for Chicago. Leon Durham at first. Played 12 years with the Cubs. One of six teams that he's played for. Here's a 2000 home run off Dunstan's bat in and out of Barry Bonds, his teammate now, in and out of Bonds' glove and over the wall. <laughs> and now the two sit together. 
in the Giants dugout with San Francisco nine defensive outs away from their first world championship since 1954. That's played on a bounce by Salmon and Lofton has another hit. Two out of four tonight and eight for his last 12. Kenny Lofton has sizzled the last three games. Salmon can't make the play, does keep the ball in front of him. Consider this about Bonds and Dunstan. Sean Dunstan, including this year, has 5,771 at bats, 197 walks through his career. Barry Bonds had 198 walks this year. When you look at a guy like Bonds, I mean, so much has been said of him as a really a bats with one on one out. A four time league MVP is Barry Bonds. You could make the case, and people have made the case, that it could be six. 1991, it went to Terry Pendleton of the Atlanta Braves. The year 2000 to Bonds teammate Jeff Kent. The relationship between Bonds and the media, some people peg, is the reason why he doesn't have six MVPs. Pitch out. Often running, and he still steals second. Will get up and go to third. First dance throw too late. And Lofton at third with only one out. In his haste, Benji Molina runs past the pitch out. Watch how he goes too far outside, has to reach back to his left. A poor throwing position. It's in the dirt. The ball gets by Kennedy, and Lofton impeded somewhat in going toward third. So a throwing error on Molina, another stolen base for Lofton, and he's in third with one out again. Now the infield has to come in. Rich Aurelia. One ball, no strikes. Runner at third, one out. That was half a squeeze right there. Aurelia. If, if you're going to try to bunt for a base hit, you can't do it with the infield in because Gloss is already in. Watch Lofton frozen at third, so it's not a squeeze play. Aurelia trying to get Lofton in via a bunt. That was an odd play right there. I don't know whether Kenny Lofton, it's almost impossible for a guy third to miss the squeeze sign because usually it's said to him by the third base coach. The 1 1 pitch. Two balls and a strike. <laughs> Donnelly getting loose for the Angels in their bullpen. The Giants have scored two runs since Francisco Rodriguez took over. A chance for another. Two and two. Rodriguez wants to strike out. He has two. That is line foul. I think if I were Rodriguez, I'd wind up. You have the infield in. He's more effective from his windup, but he's electing to throw from his stretch. And that last pitch, he has a tendency to do when he stretches. Hang the slider. See where Molina is? That was a hanger that Rodriguez got away with. He doesn't throw that type of slider when he winds up. The 2 2. Got him on the outside corner, two out. Tight slider gets Aurelia. Boy, that was nasty. Aurelia had one chance. That hanging slider, no chance on this one. Now 
Now it's Ken. Lofton at third, two out. Seventh inning, four to nothing, Giants. Low for ball one. The four time MVP on deck. Probably win his fifth this year. Could very easily end up the MVP of this World Series. Runner at third, two out. One ball, one strike on Kent. A reminder that Emmett Smith is 93 yards shy of becoming the NFL's all time rushing leader. The Cowboys and Emmett take on Seattle this weekend on Fox. Kent waits for a one ball, one strike pitch. One and two. The Angels in the bottom of the seventh will have Garrett Anderson, Troy Gloss, and Brad Fulmer. Slider that's fouled. It's still one and two. Another hanger. Rodriguez hittable tonight. Line drive base hit a two out RBI hit by Kent who pumps his fist. As he looks into the dugout on his way to first, it's five to nothing, San Francisco. The shift is put on as Barry Bond stands in with two walks and a home run. He's already homered tonight against Rodriguez. That was last inning. A five to nothing Giants lead. Here in the seventh inning. The steal, the throwing error by Molina. And the two out can't hit. A 1 0 pitch to Bonds. One ball, one strike. That was about the same pitch that he hit out his last at bat. Barry's going to try to find every exit and fair play in this ballpark before he leaves. Two balls and a strike. Bonds has hit two. Big home runs into the bleachers out in right center field, and both have been at exit areas deep into the night. That's a strike, and it's two and two. Good fastball from Rodriguez. Bonds agrees. Bond strikes out, and it's time to stretch in Anaheim. But the Giants come up with another big run. Another two out run, something they've featured this entire postseason. It's five to nothing, San Francisco, as we move to the bottom of the seventh. Go back through the years. Barry Bonds, a 1982 graduate, Sarah High School in San Mateo, California. Played with AAA Hawaii before his call up to the Pirates in 1986. 
And his first career home run off Craig McMurtry of the Atlanta Braves. June the 4th. 612 regular season home runs later. And Barry Bonds getting his first shot in the World Series, and he hasn't missed. Hitting over 500 in this World Series. Right at the 500 mark with a home run tonight, a strikeout, two more walks, 26 walks in the postseason. And you look at his highlights from this postseason, celebrating against Atlanta. A game tying three run shot against Chuck Finley. That was game three of the NLCS. Game two of this World Series made it a one run game. And Barry Bonds and the San Francisco Giants are a win away. Tonight, Bonds with a home run for Barry, his eighth of this postseason. Came in 196 in his career in the postseason with only one home run. And now he has eight as Garrett Anderson will start it for Anaheim, bottom of the seventh inning. Gloss and Fulmer will follow if anybody gets on Spezio. Against a guy who should not go unnoticed, Russ Ortiz for the game that he's turned in tonight. Six innings, no runs, two hits, two walks, two strikeouts. One infield hit, one broken bat hit by Adam Kennedy, the other by Salmon. Anderson 0 for 2. Ball one. Ball two. We talked about it in the opening with the lead, especially now late. The Giants will play the rest of this game like game seven. If Ortiz stumbles at all in the seventh inning, that Giants bullpen will get to work. Anderson swinging on two and oh. Browns to Kent, one away. Boy, does that help him out. Garrett Anderson on a two nothing pitch. We talked to both managers about taking pitches three and one, two and oh. That pitch could have been high, but he really does Russ Ortiz a favor. I mean, that ball could have been called high. Right around the letters. Not a good pitch to hit. And now Gloss. Talked about how things have changed since the third inning in game four. The Angels up three to nothing against Kirk Reeder. Since that third inning, the Angels are hitting 203, 15 out of 74. Now 16 out of 75 as Gloss is on with a one out hit in the seventh. I think you'll see the Giant bullpen back up. Dave Rigetti, Dusty Baker taking no chances here. They are fully equipped, and the phone is just rung. Fully equipped, rested. And a strong bullpen. Felix Rodriguez was loosening last inning. And here's Fulmer. J.T. Snow holding Gloss on at first base. I'll tell you, a lot of managers do that. Now the left-hander, Scott Ayer, back up to join Rodriguez. Now he's sitting down. Five-run lead, no chance of Gloss going anywhere. And yet J.T. Snow is still on the bag. That decision comes from a manager. With a left-handed batter at the plate. Right. 0 for 2 against his high school teammate, Russ Ortiz. One ball, one strike. Yeah. 
One and one on Fulmer. Five to nothing Giants in the seventh. Two balls and a strike. Air rejoins Rodriguez in the Giants' bullpen. Hit right field. Two on, one out. And that base hit by Fulmer may end the night for Ortiz as Dusty Baker. Stomps out of the dugout. No signal to the bullpen yet. It'll be Felix Rodriguez. It'll be Scott Spezio at the plate. For a young man who grew up an Angels fan, Russ Ortiz, he has done himself and his organization, the Giants, very proud tonight in game six. Russ Ortiz took the souvenir with him. Dusty Baker said, come here. You deserve the game ball tonight as he exits pitching into the seventh inning with a five to nothing lead. But now a spectator as Felix Rodriguez comes on with two on one out. Seventh inning and Spezio at the plate. Rodriguez the third guy to ever appear in all of his team's games in a World Series that went six or more. He's been busy. Spezio 0 for 2 tonight. Ball one. One area Rodriguez does not th want to throw Spezio in is that ball down and in. Spezio can take advantage of that pitch right there. Popped up foul back and out of play. That was about the height, but you could see the ball tailing away. That's the way Spezio could put the Angels back in this game. So Rodriguez goes to the tailing fastball on the outside part. Reaching for it. 95 miles per hour and it's one and two. Benji Molina on deck. But it could be a spot for Mike Sosha to use a pinch hitter. Orlando Palmero has a bat. Getting ready. Good rip by Spezio. It stays one and two. You can see Santiago wanted that fastball in. That's a dangerous area right now. That puts the Angels right back in it. You make a mistake away, it's a single. You make a mistake inside, it's five to three. A 
Rodriguez stepped off. Now Tim Worrell is up next to Scott Air. Two and two. Bad by Spezio as it stays two and two. Michael Eisner watching the Angels who trail five to nothing, bottom of the seventh. Two on, one out. Full count. Really can't afford to send the runners here. You're trailing by five. On an uncharacteristic strikeout to Spezio. Or a line drive, you're out of the inning. Line drive at somebody. Spezio hits one into deep right field. Back is Sanders at the rail. Home run. Five three in the seventh. What a tenacious at bat. Down and in. Hitting from Molina, strike one. Spezio, 11 for 15, with runners in scoring position in the postseason, a 7.33 average. And his last hit, a three run home run to make it a two run game. Strike two on Palmero as Felix Rodriguez tries to come back. Close out the inning. 18 comeback wins in the seventh inning or later to this postseason. 14 when trailing by three or more. And this season they put together 28 innings with five or more runs scoring. They put up three as Palmero stays alive. I don't know whether the monkey deserves. Uh, all the credit. I think maybe the sand frog deserves a little of the credit. 
That's Spezio's band's name. But this crowd, people say they get tired of hearing about the monkey. They put the rally monkey up on the scoreboard, and this place went berserk <laughs> when the pitching change was made. And the next hitter, Spezio, really battled. Oh, what an impact. And ends up with a three run home run into right. And Benito Santiago is in serious pain after taking that last foul tip or a piece of the bat from Palmero. That's what they put up on the scoreboard to get this team going. And the power of Spezio just enough to get it into the seats and right. Now they're going to let Rodriguez throw some pitches, and I mean Santiago is hurt. He's already took one follow through on a swing off his left thumb. And on that 0 2 pitch to Palmero, either the ball or the bat got Santiago again. On the left wrist. Oh boy. He has taken a beating all year long. Of course, so has Benji Molina. Goes with the territory. Ball one to Palmero. The number nine hitter Kennedy on deck. The home run by Bonds in the sixth and the two out RBI hit by Jeff Kent in the top of this seventh. The difference in the game now. Palmero stays up there. Airs ready. Morel should be ready by now. Rodriguez with his 2 2 to Palmero. And now a good at bat by Orlando Palmero. Balling in the hole 0 and 2. Three foul balls, two pitches out of the strike zone. It's 2 and 2. Palmero, a pinch hit double in game five, has only hit this postseason. Two out. It was an eight pitch at bat to Spezio. Watch the location of the pitches. Same speed, all fastball. Outside. Foul back, one and one. One ball, two strikes. The fifth pitch outside, two two. Outside. Outside. Uh oh, time. It's a 5-3 game. Rodriguez came back from that home run to strike out the pinch hitter Palmero. He's gone with Kennedy coming up for Anaheim. Scott Ayer finishing up his warm-up tosses. 
Dominic Purcell plays John Doe, a mysterious man who knows everything except who he is. John Doe. All new episode airs Friday at 9 Eastern, 8 Central. Scott Ayer has kind of gone unnoticed in this postseason. Nine games he has not allowed an earned run. Adam Kennedy will be the hitter. Rodriguez goes a third of an inning, allows one run on one hit. The other two runs belong to Russ Ortiz, who can still only be the winner if he gets a decision. One strikeout for Rodriguez, and now it's Kennedy with the bases empty, two out. Ball one inside. Eckstein at the top of the order to follow, either here in the seventh or starting off the eighth. Kennedy with a base hit. And another shattered bat. Second shattered bat and second hit. And that's going to be all for Scott Ayer. With two outs, you almost have to bring in one of the most effective relievers on either side, and that's Tim Worrell. So the tying run will be at the plate. Tim Worrell has to take over here in the seventh with Eckstein coming up for the Angels. Air came in to face one batter. Kennedy gave up the hit. Tying run at the plate and Tim Worrell. 3 0 this postseason. On for the 12th time in October for the Giants. Eckstein takes strike one. Ball one strike. Erstad on deck. Axstein flies to right. Sanders puts it away. And a long bottom of the seventh inning is finally finished. Morrell comes on to get the final out. Scott Spezio has made game six a game again. We go to the eighth inning. Giants bat leading it 5 3. We welcome you back to game six of this 2002 World Series. Just joining us, you see the scoring has been done. The middle innings on. The Giants got out in front, three to nothing, then five to nothing. But Anaheim facing elimination tonight came up with three runs in the bottom of the seventh as Brendan Donnelly knocks Santiago on his back with the first pitch of the eighth inning. Santiago's been knocked on his back all night long, defensively and now offensively. The numbers for Donnelly, his tenth game. In my view, Troy Percival's got to be the pitcher right now. He's the best the Angels have. And I don't think Mike Sosha would forgive himself if he gives up a run with other than his best. Down 5 3 in the eighth inning. One ball, one strike. You might say, well, what if the Angels tie it? Then you go into extra innings, and then you'd have Percival ready. Well, the same is true right now. I mean, you're in a tie game situation because Donnelly cannot give up any more runs. The 1 1. Pop back here. Strike two. I think Santiago's 0 for 3 tonight. Excuse me, Joe. I think the way I would go with that is I mean, Percival's your best. And if you get beat with your best, or if you give up more runs with your best, 
and you've lost the World Series with your best. Percival has not pitched since game two. Santiago didn't offer at that pitch. It's ball two. It looked like the bat came around the plate, but the first base umpire, Jerry Crawford, said no swing. I thought he went around. I did too. Did he, did his body take the bat around, or did he have an intent to hit it? Looked to me like he went around. I think Benito Santiago caught a break there. It counts two balls, two strikes. Snow and Sanders will follow here in the eighth. Again up and in. Third pitch of that type in this at bat, and it's three and two. Santiago rarely walks anything in the area. Three two. Stay full. The Angels in the bottom of this eighth will have Erstad, Salmon, and Anderson. All the momentum in their dugout at the moment, but any runs put up by the Giants in this eighth inning will take all that back. It's Brendan Donnelly on the mound. And his 3 2 pitch. A lead off walk. And ball four wasn't close. He walked only 27 times this year. Now Percival gets up, I think. Or he's down now, but he'll get up. Well, he's down and yeah. up and down and up and down <laughs> and up. <laughs> JT Snow now. With a runner at first and nobody out. Snow one for three tonight. Francisco Rodriguez came on in the fifth inning. Rodriguez went two and two thirds and allowed two runs, both earned on four hits. They're the difference in the game. Snow. Sounded like he broke his bat. Erstad, one out. That'll bring in Reggie Sanders, who's 0 for 3 tonight, 5 out of 19 in the World Series. Even after that uh, fly ball out thrown by Donnelly, Donnelly still upset at that walk, and now Percival is up and he gets ready very quickly. Donnelly upset about the walk and maybe before that the yep. one two pitch that Santiago had called for ball two instead of strike three. He's at first with one out and Sanders. Strike one. Jose Molina has taken over behind the plate for Benji Molina who was lifted for the pinch hitter Orlando Palmero who struck out in the bottom of the seventh. So it's Jose Molina looking into the dugout. The signs for the bench in time called. Two. 
Xanders has struck out twice and popped up. Two out. Good fastball from Donnelly right in on the hands. I think big league pitchers throw it where they want to all the time. <laughs> that missed by about a foot. But it got Sanders. Now it's David Bell. Santiago still at first with two out. Bell one for three tonight with a single and a run scored, hammering at a high fastball, strike one. Bell singled with one out in front of the home run by Dunstan. Dunstan hit a home run against Kevin Apier. And when you think about it, Dunstan waits on deck as a kid from Brooklyn. Who helped the Giants take a 2 0 game six lead in the World Series? As Bell pops it up behind the plate, Jose Molina out of room, that's strike two. Then a double by Lofton, stole third, scored in a wild pitch to make it 3 0. Bonds a home run leading off the sixth. Kent a two out RBI hit in the seventh to make it five to nothing. Till the three run home run by Spezio in the bottom of the seventh. Mike Sosia trying to get Jose Molina get his attention. Maybe to remind him that Santiago likes to delay steal. He only stole four bases, but he'll lull you to sleep. I would imagine that's what Molina is talking to Donnelly about right there. It's a good time to run. Nothing in two. You throw a ball in the dirt. Take a chance on a ball out of the strike zone. You're thrown out. Bell leads off the ninth. Just outside ball one. Mike Sosha's already had a between inning meeting with Tim McClellan, the home plate umpire. That was wide. Crowd wanted it, but it's ball one. Ball two. The two, three, and four hitters for the Angels are coming up against Tim Worrell. Erstad, Salmon, and Anderson. Erstad and Salmon have had success against the San Francisco right hander. Hitless tonight is Erstad, and one for his last 12. 5 3 Giants, bottom of the eighth, game six. San Francisco up three games to two. Ball one.
One ball, one strike. Salmon. Ball one. That looked like a change up from Warrell. It changed directions in a hurry. Nobody on or out. Salmon into center field. Lofton will play it on a bounce. Tying run is on. That's a problem with that prevent defense. John Figgins is now in the run for 10 Salmon. The Giants win their prevent defense. That means no doubles. By playing too deeply, a ball that Lofton normally would have gotten to falls in front of him. So no, no doubles, but a single. Rigetti. Dave Rigetti is going to come out and talk to Tim Worrell. Rob Nen, the closer for the Giants, cranks it up. Down five to nothing. Into the bottom of the seventh. It's a 5 4 game. Bottom of the eighth. Tying run on. And nobody out. The Angels trying to live. For one more game. You could see him say change up. And that's what Erstad hit out to make it 5 4. Garrett Anderson. That's a foul ball. Foul ball, foul ball, strike one. Ball plate umpires called Tim McClellan. That ball fouled by about a yard. You can also tell JT Snow when you left handed throwing first baseman turns back to his left, it's foul. Just foul. Maybe not a yard, maybe a foot. Sean Figgins at first base can fly. Fastest guy on the field. A little slicer down the left field line. That's a hit. Figgins scoots over to third. Bond still can't come up with it, but Figgins will hold, and Anderson in the second. Nobody out. I think Sean Figgins caused that error, if it's an error. If Bonds comes up cleanly with the ball, he has a shot at Figgins. But the daring do of Sean Figgins, Barry Bonds, the ball bouncing back to his left, he looked up, and the combination of those two puts Angels on at second and third. Right there.
It's second and third, nobody out, and Rob Nen is coming in. Tim Worrell will stand and watch. Sean Figgins, the lead runner at third on this hit by Garrett Anderson. And an error on Barry Bonds. Bonds thought it was going to bounce to his glove hand. It came back and bounced to his bare hand. But Sean Figgins certainly had something to do with that error on Barry Bonds. Rob Nen, seven for seven in save chances in the postseason, blew eight saves during the regular year. Troy Gloss, second and third, nobody out. Ball one. Tying run at third, go ahead run at second with nobody out, and the infield is back. Loss after a ball way outside one ball one strike almost got away from Santiago the Giants forced to play their infield back and in essence play for a tie in this inning if there were one out they'd bring the infield in. First base umpire Jerry Crawford has had some very difficult calls tonight. Tough for a big man like Gloss to stop that swing. Big difference between two and one and one and two. Yep. It's two and one on Gloss. Into left center field. Bonds on the run won't get it. And the Anaheim Angels have come all the way back and lead it 6-5. Strike one on Fulmer. Meant to be outside, inside, plus another key hit. Peter McGowan, the president of the Giants. Fulmer strike two. For the second time this postseason, the Angels have come back from five runs down. They also did it twice during the regular season. Still nobody out in the inning. Nen would love a strikeout to hold the runner at second. Smoke foul. My goodness. Hopefully everybody's okay down the right side. It appears they are.
ripped into right field. Foul ball. And that was close. Mike Riley, the right field umpire. That's why Major League Baseball has six umpires for the World Series. Not as close as I thought. That ball up around the shoulders. And foul by about a half a foot. Fulmer strikes out. And a big strikeout for the Giants and then to hold loss at second now one away. Now with that strikeout first base open you may see a walk to Spezio with Jose Molina on deck. And we will. It's not that Mike Sosia doesn't have the luxury of another pinch hitter. It's that Jose Molina is his catcher. Benji's already out of the game. He does have Wooten who can catch but the ninth inning of game six of the World Series is not a time for Sean Wooten to be behind the plate. Not when you're one run up. Molina's looking back into the dugout, but Mike Sosha says, go get him. And Dusty Baker sends Dave Rigetti out of the dugout. He wants Santiago to join him for a meeting on the mound with Ned. Jose Molina still looking in the dugout. Sometimes, you know, you don't hit that often. So you're used to being called back. This is an unusual situation for Molina. Two on with one out. Trying to bump the runners up even with one out with Kennedy on deck. And then X time. Strike one. Under any circumstances, that's a bad play. Under any circumstances. Ron Renicky threw the signs again, the third base coach. Hey, you got you got the seventh run out there on second base. You can throw a flare in there somewhere. A bunt moves them along. The bunt. Second and third, two out. Sacrifice one, three. And now you would think Kennedy will get a walk. I would think so with Eckstein on, on deck. Under any circumstances, in my view, that is a bad play. And that's called by the dugout. That's right. That's right. Initially, I thought Molina was doing that on his own, but he clearly squared around. Now getting high fives for a sacrifice. Well the Giants with first base open will pitch to Adam Kennedy. The ALCS most valuable player. Here's a guy who was seventh in the American League hitting 312 during the regular season. The pesky Eckstein is on deck. Then can at least be careful with Kennedy. Yeah Kennedy only walked 19 times all year so he could swing at something out of the strike zone. Like that. One ball one strike as Santiago kept it at the plate. Good play by Santiago. 
Kennedy, the freest swinger on the Angels. A base hit could mean two runs. And out will keep it a one run game going to the ninth with Percival taking over. Dunstan is due to lead off the ninth with Lofton and Aurelia to follow. Canton Bonds, the next two hitters. Three and one, and again, first base is open. Up three games to two, had a five to nothing lead, headed to the bottom of the seventh. Three in the seventh, three in the eighth, and a chance for more for the Angels, who lead by one. Strikes out and then keeps it a one run game. Troy Percival will take over. Trying to get the save as the Angels try to get the win to force game seven tomorrow. Alex Ochoa takes over and right. Salmon was lifted for the pinch runner, Figgins, who's also out of the lineup. Troy Percival is on the mound to try and save it. Our All-State Good Hands defensive play of the game is back in the third. Gloss, who knew then what he would provide in the eighth inning for the Angels, picked up the bunt by Lofton Barehand and got the out at first. In the eighth inning, a two-run double to put the Angels on top, 6-5. And now it's Percival, who's 5-for-5. Five and save chances in seven games this postseason. Trying to force game seven. Tom Goodwin will come off the bench and bat for Dunstan, who was one for three with a two run homer. That's the area that Percival can be wild in until he adapts to that first hitter. He said that the other night when he faced. Rich Aurelia as the first batter. One ball, one strike. Forty saves and 44 chances during the regular season. Goodwin, one for seven career against Percival, two and one. Catch me if you can.
Fast ball to get Goodwin. Kenny Lofton. Two for four tonight with two big runs scoring for the Giants. Lofton scored the third run in the fifth inning and the fifth run of the game for the Giants in the seventh. Which at the time made it five to nothing. It's now six five and on. The Angels down three games to two. Strike two. Thing with Percival, he'll throw the two seamer that almost looks like a changeup. That's how hard his four seamer is. Often stays alive. But all you can do with that pitch is punch it. Thrown too hard and in a tough location. Percival hasn't been in a game since last Sunday night. Closers love regular work. One out, nobody on, one two pitch. That'll get out of play. The middle relief for the Angels struggled the last two games. Tonight it was the Giants' turn. Percival trying to shut the door in the night. Two balls, two strikes. Rich Aurelia, the last chance tonight for the Giants. Two wild card teams in the World Series. Troy Percival trying to get the most out of it. Aurelia. Ball one. After Aurelia, you get Jeff Kent. Jeff Kent, two hits tonight, three hits in game five, including two two run home runs. So it wouldn't take much to give the Giants a chance here in the ninth inning. One and one. Throwing that hard with that location. Ball two. Oh. 
two balls, two strikes. Steve Lyons is standing by on the field with Troy Gloss. All right, Joe, thank you very much with Troy Gloss. You're a guy that's got seven postseason home runs, but no bigger than that double in the eighth for this ball club. Oh, without question. I mean, uh, you know, we, we thought when Spees hit the home run there in the seventh, we thought, okay, we're back in it. You know, the first two guys got on that inning, and I was just, I was doing, trying to do something to get one run across, whether that was a ground ball, a blooper, sack fly, whatever. But uh, fortunately, it worked out for us today. 43 come from behind wins during the regular season, seven in this postseason. Talk about the never say die attitude of this club. Well, I mean, we've had that attitude all year. I mean, uh, you know, Soch kind of kind of breathes that because uh, he never changes, he never gives up either. Uh, you know, we feel like if we got nine shots at it, we, we like our chances. You know, and our pitchers did a great job. You know, keeping us back, keeping us, keeping us in the game there, and uh, gave us a chance to come back. During this postseason, the entire country has been introduced to these crowds, the rally monkey, and everything that goes with it. Does that make you guys feel like you're never out of a game, even when you're down five nothing in the seventh? Yeah, I mean, you know, th these crowds have been unbelievable. I mean, uh, you know, 43, 45,000 people, loud, screaming into every pitch. I mean, it's beautiful. They've been great. You know, I mean, that, that definitely pumps everybody up, gets everybody going. You know, because we want to do it for them. We all dream about a game seven. You're going to get to live about it tomorrow. Tell me what you're thinking. Man, I mean, look, going into today, that's all we were looking at. Just get us to get us to game seven. And, you know, baseball's a funny game. Anything can happen. And uh, that was our goal today was get to game seven. Now we're giving ourselves that chance. And uh, we'll see what happens tomorrow. All right, Troy, congratulations. Great game. Good job. Thank you. All right, Joe, back to you all. All right, Steve. Down five to nothing going to the bottom of the seventh. With that swing and miss by Rich Aurelia, this World Series lives on to Game 7 tomorrow night. Troy Percival wrapping up this Game 6. A classic in Anaheim with one more to play. We'll be back after this.